Hey, what's up guys? It's been a couple weeks since I've uploaded, but today I'm going to show you a uh, pretty interesting, you know, piece here we're going to create together. I'm going to be using quads, clean, sub-D modeling. Now, I do want to preface this idea came from Machine's recent video. I guess he's releasing this new plugin. Super excited for that. But it uh, gave me an idea to show you how you can actually tackle basic topology situations to create something, you know, pretty cool. Like this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and kind of commentate the workflow. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this guy and we're just going to start again from scratch. So I'm going to add a cylinder here. Now, whenever you're doing any sort of sub D modeling, you generally want to start at a lower resolution because sub D is going to increase the resolution. So if you start at a super high vertex count, it's just going to be unnecessary you're gonna have an already high resolution so start low and uh, just gonna make things easier okay so I'm gonna keep this cylinder here at 32 vertices and I'll show you why in a second and I'm gonna rotate this just 90 degrees here on the X we'll scale this up a little bit and then what I want to do is I want to duplicate this piece I'm gonna rotate it a bit scale that down kind of move it up and I want to show you something interesting here, just so you kind of have an idea as to why I choose the segment counts that I choose. So if we take a look, you're going to see this doesn't line up very nicely. All these edges here, you know, all these aren't lining up with the edges on this main cylinder. We have almost, it looks like we have double the amount, right? So, you know, what I could do here to start dissolving these and I'm gonna slowly be able to start lining this up. But what I'm gonna do is actually just add a new cylinder with half the amount, and that should actually line up pretty well here on this cylinder. So let's add in a new one. I'm gonna to go to 16 vertices here, and then we'll just rotate this, move it up, scale it down a bit, and just kind of get like a rough positioning here. And scale this SZZ. And then if I go into top view, you're gonna see if I scale this down, it actually starts lining up almost perfectly with these edges here. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna try my best to kind of line that up there. That looks good. So this should be pretty easy to merge together. I'm just gonna be taking the vertices, merging them together, and we're just gonna go through this one step at a time. So if, you know, these tricky shapes and sub-D modeling seems difficult to you, it's very basic, so, you know, don't get too tripped up. Just start one step at a time, okay? So what I want to do here is I first want to add a union boolean, okay? So I'm going to basically fuse this together. But before I do that, let me just make a duplicate here. I'm kind of thinking ahead. So Shift D, right click, and we'll just hide that. And I'm just going to go here and Shift click on both of them. And then you can go Control plus on the number pad to run a union. And we're just going to hide this cutter here. And now we just have one single object. And obviously, if I want to access the geometry, I need to apply that Boolean. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool. So this next part might seem tricky, but it's very, very easy. Remember, if we're going sub D, we want to have quads most of the time. We could have some triangles here and there. And in this solution, we probably will have one, but it's really not a big deal if we do. And you'll see why. So the first thing I need to do is merge these you know, pieces together. Now I could do this manually or I could kind of automate the process. So I'm gonna select everything and then press M by distance and we can slightly holding shift increase that until it captures you know, the near nearby ones. Now these are, we're gonna to have to do manually, not a problem. Now we have to kind of make a decision. This is going to disrupt the curvature, but when it comes to sub D, it's really not a huge problem. If we were doing like basic Boolean modeling and sliding this, that's when it would become, you know, kind of an issue here with the shading. But we're going to be doing sub D, so we should be able to merge these at the center just fine. I'll press M, I'm going to merge that at the center. Okay, and then if you have machine tools, or I'm sorry, mesh machine, you can do a symmetry with Alt X. Otherwise, you would go up here to mesh, symmetrize, and we'd be symmetrizing from, in this case, the positive X to the negative X. So I'll just flip that. There you go. But I would recommend getting machine, or I'm sorry, mesh machine. I keep mixing them up for quick symmetry. It's going to save you a lot of time. Or with hard ops, of course, you can do uh, symmetry that way as well. Okay, so so far we've kind of gotten this merged together, which is great. I'm going to do, and actually before I do anything else, let me re-enable this cylinder right here and select it. Okay, because what I want to do is run a difference boolean. So shift click on that, 
control minus and then what I can do is let's see how do I want to do this let's go ahead and select the cylinder we're going to change the solver to exact just kind of play with this for a second and also what I want to do is take this face and kind of move it down a little bit and to do that I'm going to have to go up here and add a custom orientation we'll kind of move that back and just kind of move this down into there and the reason it's getting you know glitchy and things like that is because you know this boolean is occupying the same area in 3d space so usually what we want to do is use that exact boolean here it's gonna be a lot easier that way but um, it's still a little bit messy but I can kind of move this up we'll get that sorted in a second I just want to see let's see maybe if we just scale this up a little bit outside the bounds that'll work and again the reason it gets glitchy is simply because we're occupying the same exact space in 3d as this other you know mesh right here so you can always scale this up just a little bit and since we're gonna be merging the vertices anyways that's totally cool and then I can just kind of move this around and just find a good spot that I like let's see let's try to find a good good location I think right here isn't too bad that could be an interesting solution and again I'm trying to plan ahead I'm trying to figure out you know which vertices I'm gonna I gonna end up having to merge here so you can kind of make these decisions and just kind of thinking ahead a little bit you can see we have a small triangle right there that should be easy to be you know moved it just kind of depends where you place this boolean here I wouldn't stress about it too much so let's go with something like this the more you kind of do, you know, basic topology solving examples kind of like this, the more you kind of get used to merging vertices, running sub D, using Booleans with sub D, all that type of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply this Boolean. There we go. And we're just going to go one step at a time. Don't get too stressed, you know, trying to run sub D. It's going to be a mess for right now. We'll fix it. So what I want to do is start working on adding some quads here. So what I'm going to do is control R going to drop a loop cut here press J to join those together we'll do another one right here press J we'll do another one over here we'll press J and what we can do is symmetrize to the other side just to save a little bit of time and then I'll press control R and just add maybe something like that and then control R right here and then S Y zero just trying to make some even and consistent you know uh, quads in this area so not really a big deal if I wanted to make these even more even I could kind of you know move these around a little bit so they're more or less square but really not a huge issue and you can see I'm just doing very basic changes here it's not anything tricky I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna join this together as well and then another one over here we do have a small triangle in this area we can we can fix that in a second not really a problem this area right here what I could do is you know merge those together again we do have a triangle it's not really the end of the world you could just dissolve that one out and you'll probably be fine since we're using sub D so again just maybe control X on that one it shouldn't be too big of a problem and let's see what else we can do let's go control R right here what this is going to do is basically create a quad for us right in this area so that should be fine yeah it should be all right actually before I do that let me let me see let me right click to subdivide and just kind of slide this up so that way I can kind of get this a little bit closer to the edge we'll kind of have a proximity loop more or less I don't know why there's a vertex here just gonna dissolve that out dissolve that out as well and now we kind of have this nice and natural proximity loop going around which is great and then again we could go over here and subdivide that just to create a quad and join that together maybe slide that over just a bit and if you want to move to a side where there's no edge you can double tap G and then press the C key if you didn't know that it's a pretty cool trick so now we kind of have something like this and it looks like we also have near miss vertices we'll just merge those together and if you guys don't have machine tools yet yes I think it costs five bucks now but I mean this is a tool I'd spend hundreds of dollars for it's very very good you can quickly merge vertices together for example shift one instead of having to press the M key it just saves you a lot of time basically 
So this is looking pretty good. Could even dissolve this random edge right here out. We will have a triangle, but again, I can just add in a loop right here and I basically created a quad. You can see how easy this stuff kind of gets the more you kind of practice and get used to it. I'm also gonna slide this down a bit just so it's a bit more even. Slide this down a bit as well, just so it's kind of following that curvature more or less. And again, we can run a symmetry. Let's do one more loop right here, join that together. And again, what we can probably do here, looks like we have some near miss vertices again. I'm just gonna merge by distance and then drop another loop in this area. And maybe drop one over here and then maybe just move this back a bit. And you can already see this is getting a heck of a lot better. And since we're not gonna be doing Boolean modeling here, we're not gonna be using like the shade smooth by angle and running like bevels and whatnot. Since we're gonna be using sub D, I'm not too worried about any shading errors that are here as a result of the curvature. It's not a problem because sub D is gonna fix that for us. Now we have a big end gone right here. So I'm just gonna inset this, press the I key. And let me just, unmark all that. If you have hard ops, it might automatically mark edges with creases and stuff, so just be careful. We'll just unmark that real quick. And one trick I like to do if I want to quickly like identify any end gons is I'll go up here to select all by trait, faces by sides, and then greater than four. And you're going to see the only areas we have greater than four vertices you're going to see are just on these end gons right here, just the flat part. So not a big deal because what I can do is I can delete this face right here and then just do a grid fill. So F3, run a grid fill. There we go. Can even rotate this a bit, doesn't really matter. Then we can do one right here as well. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna inset this so I have a nice proximity loop here. And then again, grid fill, and same idea over here. We can inset that, and we can run a grid fill in this area, pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and run our sub D, see how it's looking. And I'm gonna remove this god awful new modifier for auto smooth, gonna get rid of that. And then just control one, control two, maybe even control three. You're gonna see we already have a pretty decent result here. Now one thing I like to do is go into wireframe mode just so I can kind of see you know, how everything looks, turn off the optimal display. You can even see the topology. Even though we have, do we have a triangle here? I'm not sure. Okay, in this case, we don't have a triangle, but even if we did, it wouldn't have really been a huge problem. It would have subdivided nicely into a quad. So this isn't really a big problem. The topology is clean, nice and even. I have no complaints here, and you can always increase the resolution, decrease it, do whatever you need to do. Now, one thing I like to do before I finish up these sub D exercises is I like to go into mat cap and just see exactly how this looks with a nice mat cap. So I could go into this one, or I could go into you know this one as well. This one's a little bit more forgiving. So you can kind of see there's really not any sort of shading errors anywhere. It's a very clean kind of fusion surface here. It looks really great. So that is my solution for this. Again, I got this idea from Machine's recent video. He has a new tool coming out, which I'm super excited for. I use pretty much all of his tools, machine tools, mesh machine, uh, decal machine, all his tools are amazing and I will continue promoting them because they're just that good. So if you don't like me promoting tools that save you time, then my channel's probably not for you. But that's my solution, very easy. You don't even need any fancy tools to do this. You can do this all in vanilla Blender, and it's a pretty fun exercise, so go ahead and give it a try. And one other thing I wanna show you is you can actually have a bit more fun here and use a simple deform, and I could deform this on the Z-axis, and now, I kind of have this cool effect here, and you can't do this you know, with n-gons or quote unquote unclean topology. This is a good example of where quads and sub D would be very useful. So you can kind of see, like, look at how clean this is. Pretty cool. So just a kind of a fun exercise, gets you used to topology, gets you used to modeling and stuff like that. So hope you enjoyed the video, give it a try on your own, and I'll see you in the next one. And real quick before I end the video, shameless plug, you can actually have some fun with material works and make this thing look even more realistic, adding some scratches, adding some grunge, metal, of course, with material works. This thing is just insane. We have a new update coming soon for decals. I'm super excited for that. But I mean, now we have a really basic cylinder that looks 
actually realistic just by using a bit of grunge, a bit of edgeware, and just basic textures to make this thing look even more realistic. So pretty cool stuff. Thought I'd add that in the end of the video. And that's it for me. See ya.